Welcome to Understanding and Managing Paragraph Spacing. Today we'll answer the question, when is a space not a space? Uncover the mysteries of line and paragraph spacing and learn to successfully manage them. In this lesson, we'll help you understand what it means to have 12 points before or after a line, why not to use hard returns to create vertical spacing, how to quickly fix documents that are using hard returns for vertical space and replace them with automatic spacing. As a bonus, we'll also teach you the proper way to build signature lines. We'll cover features which are available for Microsoft Word for Windows or Mac. Welcome to Understanding and Managing Paragraph Spacing. Today we'll cover paragraph spacing, line spacing, white space, and blank lines. I'm Ivy Gray from WordRig, and I'm here today with Baron Henley from Affinity Consulting. Take it away, Baron. Hello, my name is Baron, and this segment is going to cover um, paragraph spacing, both within a paragraph and between paragraphs. So this is a really important subject when it comes to legal documents, although it will be short and sweet. <clears throat> so let's talk about the easy, the easy of the two things is um, spacing within the paragraph. So if I want to make these two paragraphs have double space, for example, um, I can, so you don't have to select the whole paragraph, you just have to touch them. So all I technically need is one character from each of them or something like this, or if you wanna be super exacting, you can select the whole thing, but that's really not necessary. So anyway, I select the two paragraphs or at least touch them. And there's a button right here on the home ribbon. Um, and this will give me spacing within the paragraph options. So this is double space, this is single space, three. What you're seeing here is called active preview. <clears throat> so it's just showing you what it would look like if I clicked, but since I didn't click, if I move my mouse, it goes back to what it was. So I can click on two. That's method one for line spacing. Since line spacing is also a paragraph formatting attribute, you can also find it if you right click a paragraph and go to the paragraph option within that dialog, you will see down here at the bottom, line spacing, single, one and a half, double, at least exactly multiple. So <clears throat> normally I'm doing either single or double, sometimes one and a half. I would use exactly if I had some jurisdictions, as you may know, require that the, there's numbers on the left side of the page and you're trying to line up your text with the numbers on the left side of the page. Typically there's 28 lines per page. In that case, you cannot use single or double and get them to line up. Instead, you have to use exactly. <clears throat> and in most cases, it's exactly 24. So if I use exactly 24 for the numbers on the left side and exactly 24 for the paragraphs in the middle of the document, you can get them to line up. But if you do anything else other than that, it's really impossible to get them to line up. That's the only time I use that. So in addition to that, there are speed keys for this. Control two is double space. Control one is single space. Control five is one and a half. So one, two, five while holding down on control. And that's another easy way to do that. <clears throat> okay, the more important subject is spacing between paragraphs because it's very common for a legal document to have single space paragraphs and the author wants to have a blank line in between each paragraph. Unfortunately, most of the time, the documents that I see that, th that vertical space is created with hard returns. I'll turn on show hide so you can see these. So, and that works fine if you're after a, a title, but if you're after a paragraph number or, or a paragraph that has automatic paragraph numbering as this does, when I hit enter, it's gonna number the blank line and then to get rid of that, I've got a backspace. <clears throat> this is a violation of multiple rules of word processing. The first of which is you should use as few keystrokes as possible to get the document to look the way you want. Okay, so going enter, backspace, enter, backspace after every paragraph is not as few keystrokes as possible. Secondly, um, this is an example of, what, you know, I have to keep doing the same thing over and over to get the document to look the way I want. That is also like, I, you know, I, I normally will say, if you keep having to hit the paragraph with a hammer every single time to get it to look at what, the way you want, you're missing a feature. Like these kind of things have all been automated, you know, years and years and years ago. So wouldn't it be cool if there's a feature in Word that automatically provide vertical space between single space paragraphs? Yes, therefore that's a thing. So <clears throat> let me put this back. The other reason you shouldn't do that is because 
it creates this whole alignment issue that you have to look for. So if someone sends me a 20 page plus document with a bunch of single space paragraphs and the vertical space is all created by extra hard returns, I can almost guarantee you that somewhere in that document, there's paragraphs that are too close together or too far apart. So if this is set up correctly, you don't even have to worry about that. And it's quite easy to do this. You select the paragraphs, you click on the same button that we use to create the spacing within the paragraph. And you'll notice at the bottom, add space after paragraph. So I click on that and now I have spacing. If I go to the end of paragraph one and I hit enter, look where my cursor is. No backspace. I didn't get blank lines numbered that I have to turn off. If I go to the end of this paragraph and hit enter, you know, it's easy now. So the question is, <clears throat> what exactly did that button do? And you can find out by right-clicking a paragraph and going to paragraph. And what you're gonna see down here is, when I said add space after paragraph, it added 12 points after. Notice you can also have a before. I just normally don't use that because that would make the first line of the, of the document down off the top margin, which, I'd rather it be up against the margin, so I typically am using spacing after. So the question is, what does 12 points mean? Does it have anything to do with the font size that you're using? The answer is no, it has nothing to do with that. Um, is it truly a blank line? Well, it depends because this is actually a, a physical measurement on a ruler. In a vertical inch, and as I understand it, this comes from the printing press days, um, a, a vertical inch is, com is measured in 72 points. So if this has given me 12 points, that's actually one sixth of an inch. So is one sixth of an inch one blank line? Well, it depends. It depends on what font and point size you're using, right? So um, I don't know why Microsoft doesn't just provide a line based on the font that I'm using. Apparently it doesn't know how to do that or they just don't want to do it, I don't know. Um, but <clears throat> if I'm using an 11 or 12 point font, probably a sixth of an inch is a, is a rough approximate of a blank line. Um, but if I had a much larger font, you know, let's say this was uh, 48, now the, the one sixth of an inch is, is not, not really a blank line. So if you look up here, that's the distance between this and this. And as you can see, it does not look like a, a, a blank line. So if I, even if I made this like 26, um, still it's not exactly a blank line. So I might, the point is, I might need to adjust that depending on, let me put that back, <clears throat> depending on what pot, font and point size you're using, and I've tested this, like I've done a page of text, select it, and I picked a whole bunch of different fonts and I made them all 12 point. And none of them were the same in terms of how much vertical space that text took up. So I used the same paragraphs, you know, certain fonts at 12 point would all fit on a page, certain fonts at 12 point would trickle over onto page two. Sometimes a whole, you know, half the next page is covered by that text. So there's no consistency just because you're using Times Roman 12 point or Arial 12 point, they, they do not occupy the same amount of vertical or horizontal space, even though they're the same point size. So what I could do, if this was like too much space, for example, let's say this whole thing was a smaller point size. And now, you know, the one sixth of an inch seems a little too much. I could select these, right click and go to paragraph. And now if you use the arrows, it goes six points at a time, but you're not relegated to that. Like I could just select this and type in eight and click okay. And maybe eight, if I'm using a nine point font, maybe eight is uh, more appropriate in terms of like giving me what appears to be a blank line in between. So you may have to tweak it. Most of the fonts people use, 12 point is gonna be fine. Um, maybe it's a little bit too much or maybe it's a little small, but at least it creates the vertical space between the paragraphs and your, your eye picks it up. It makes it a little bit easier to read. Now, <clears throat> the question is, how does one quickly apply this to a document that maybe is set up wrong? And in this case, I've got a 39-page revocable trust and all of the vertical space is created with hard returns. 
So if I wanted to use this as a template and I don't want this to be super annoying and I don't want to use all these extra keystrokes, then I might want to set this up for automatic paragraph spacing. The problem is I need to first delete all the extra hard returns that are between all these paragraphs, which means I have to sit here and go delete and then delete and delete and delete. And that's 20 minutes of super annoying. So I prefer not to do that. So it, wouldn't it be cool if there's a way you could easily get rid of all these extra hard returns with just a couple of clicks? Mm -hmm. so, so you can, and here's how you do it. On the home ribbon, go to the top of your document, home ribbon, and click on the replace button. Now, let me clear this out. By default, your dialogue, when you click replace, will look like this. One of the rules of Word is, if you see a button that says more, you should click it always. These are sprinkled throughout the program. And here's what these mean. I'm hiding stuff from you. So when I click on more, I get a whole bunch of additional choices. And one of the things that I can find and replace is I can find non-printing characters under the special button. I can find like section breaks and tabs and paragraph marks. So if I click in this find what box, what am I looking for? Anywhere there's two hard returns in a row, like right here, enter, enter. And what I want to replace it with is one hard return. So if, if for every two in a row, if I replace it with one, I'm effectively going to remove all these extra hard returns between the paragraphs. So you click in the find what box, you click on special, and you choose not this, not paragraph character, the one all the way at the top. This is the symbol for a paragraph. This is an actual hard return, paragraph mark. When you click on that, it's going to insert into the box, caret P, lowercase P. See that? Caret P. What am I looking for? Two, in a, two of those in a row. So go back to special and click it again. Find what? Caret P, caret P. Replace with one of those. <clears throat> then I just hit replace all. And as you can see, okay, this is a 39 page document. How many unnecessary keystrokes were involved? 282. That's a lot, right? Like that's, that could have been an extra 10 minutes of wasted time hitting enter, 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 enter over and over again. So anyway, all done. We made 282 replacements. So using the find and replace as search and destroy. Now I can select the entire document, control A. I could go up to my give me space button and say, give me space. And now this document set up right. So if I go to the end of this paragraph and I hit enter, my, carrot, my cursor is where I want it to be. I did not have to hit two hard returns in a row. My spacing is perfect. So um, I hope you find that useful and helpful. And I hope that you use it. It is, I admit, hard to stop hitting two hard returns between paragraphs if that's what you've done your whole life. So you might want to, you know, it's sometimes you just have to remind yourself while you're typing, because I learned to type on a manual typewriter. And I, you know, first I was hitting two carriage returns. And then when I got an electric typewriter, I just, you know, enter, enter. I just kept doing that. So it took me a while to stop doing that when I was typing single space paragraphs. You might want to just to help yourself. You know, you can always start with a, you know, you're going to type a new document. You go ahead and turn it on now. You don't have to wait. So I could go up here and say, add space after paragraph. And I can type, 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 and I hit enter, and I've already got the spacing there. <clears throat> Okay, let me close that, go back to my document. One more thing, just this is kind of a random neural firing, but I just wanna point this out. So this document has a lot of um, white space at the top and bottom of each page. And when you're reading it, that can be kind of annoying because you have to skip over the, the white space gap. Uh, if you've never discovered this, I am currently in, in view and in, in print layout. So view, print layout, that is what you see is what you get. So I can see that there is a footer here. I can see the page number. If you hover over the page break and you double click, it will collapse the white space. Now, if I print this, it'll still have page numbers. It'll still have a footer. You just can't see it anymore. But now when I scroll through the document, it's a little bit easier to read because I don't have to skip over the white space, the top and bottom of every page. When you're done and you want to go back to what it was before, you can just hover over one of the page breaks, double click once more, and it'll open it back up. Okay, <clears throat> I hope that was helpful, and thanks for watching. Thank you, Baron. 
This video was created by Ivy Gray from Wordrake and Baron Henley from Affinity Consulting, who both trained as lawyers and are now Microsoft Word and Outlook enthusiasts and productivity experts. This video is part of a series. To sign up to receive tech tips and training videos via email, please visit wordrake.com slash tech tips. Take Word to the next level. Paragraph and line spacing might matter more than you think. Once you understand how to adjust them, you might be tempted to use this technical knowledge to squeeze under page limits, but WordRake offers a better way to work. Let WordRake help you meet page and word limits at the push of a button. WordRake uses complex, patented algorithms to find needless words, weak lead-ins, cliches, dull phrases, redundancies, unnecessary modifiers, and more. It presents its editing suggestions in the familiar track changes style. WordRake can make any document clearer and shorter. If you'd like to learn more, sign up to receive tech tips and training videos at wordrake.com slash tech tips. When you're ready to take your work to the next level, try Wordrake. Wordrake is clear and concise editing software that will improve your writing while respecting legally operative phrases and key legal content. It's a finely tuned collaborator that will help you satisfy clients, win more business, and do more high value work. WordRake works in Microsoft Word and Outlook. It goes beyond Microsoft's built-in spelling and grammar checkers to help you reduce legalese and wordy writing. It uses complex, patented algorithms to find useless words, dull phrases, weak lead-ins, cliches, and high-level grammatical problems, then offers suggested edits in line. WordRake document will look just like a smart colleague with an English degree has revised your work using track changes. In three simple steps, you'll have a better document or email. Try it today at wordrake.com slash trial.